On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2011 and we're going to be taking a look at a guitar solo by Prince. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, quick bit of background behind this one. I was sent a link to a video a couple of weeks ago and it was this solo. It wasn't this video, the solo that I was linked to was pixelated, it was very difficult to see what was going on. But I could hear what was going on and I thought, how have I not heard this solo before? So I did a bit of an investigation, found that it was from 2011, live at the forum. and there's going to be a link in the description below that you can click on if you want to watch this whole performance but I'm just going to focus on the solo that I was listening to when I was sent the link previously. So let's get Prince up on screen and then jump into the analysis afterwards. Can I play my guitar? I'm just going to jump in there. Like I said, that link's in the description below if you want to continue watching the performance. So getting into this solo, it is interesting in that if you guys have watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know that when I was growing up and first getting into playing the guitar, Jimi Hendrix was my main inspiration. And then I got into Gary Moore a bit as well. And the interesting thing about this particular solo is I am pretty sure that if I'd heard this solo when I was 11 or 12 years of age, I would have been heavily into Prince as well. I think that with his guitar playing, because for some reason, I don't know why, but when I was a kid in the 90s, I would have been a teenager, it was very much prevalent to see Michael Jackson and Prince together. There's something about them having the limelight together, almost like who is best? Is it Michael Jackson or is it Prince? Or at least that's how it was in the UK. So it meant that in terms of guitar heroes or guys that were just great lead guitarists and blues guitarists, Prince never fell into, I suppose, my influences when I was learning to play because I got heavily into Hendrix and Gary Moore. And it's ironic that the reason that I got into Hendrix and Gary Moore and those kind of blues players was because of the way that they would just attack their playing. Steve Ray Vaughan as well was another player that I got into in those early days. 
but they attacked their playing with attitude and they threw caution to the wind and I loved that about the sound of their lead playing and that's exactly what Prince is doing here. And there is so much technique in what Prince is doing, but there must have been other performances that Prince did that were similar to this, a freeform kind of jam within a song that is an extended lead guitar solo that I never got to hear. And the other thing to mention is that my dad would have obviously albums and we're talking about vinyls here, so records that I would stick on and have a listen to. And he also had bootleg tapes, and that is something that I listened to with Jimi Hendrix. There's loads of performances that weren't on any of the albums, but they were on tapes that my dad had. Same with Gary Moore, lots of bootleg tapes just uh, lying around, so I'd listen to those. And there must have been the equivalent of those, but my dad wasn't really into Prince. But had he been, I'm sure that I would have got into Prince as well. Something that I want to throw in there before we jump into it is the way that this has been pieced together, this solo, because I have no doubt that it is a bit of extemporization, improvisation, but also there's a bit of a theme running through it just because the band stops and we have those unison bends where we have this... And, and Prince is going to be making his way up to the crescendo. And that's kind of the reason that I know that that part certainly is planned in order for the band to stop and then to build up to his final note, which will be the classic bend up to that E, 15th fret B string, bending it up to the root note of your chord, resolving the run that he's playing. So it's put together in such a way to make a journey out of the solo, but... I think what's happened is he's just given himself free reign until that point. So everything we're hearing up till there is just him throwing caution to the wind and just sticking together some quality lines. Great blues playing in there, vibrato, hammer-ons pull off, sometimes not even picking the guitar, but still getting a great sound out of it. So as you no doubt heard there on my guitar, I've got quite a lot of distortion, bit of delay as well, trying to get as close to Prince's tone here as possible, but his tone is just epic here. The amount of sustain that he's got, and he's playing a telly, a Fender Telecaster, which is just in nature not a guitar that you go to for sustain, and these kinds of tones that he's playing with, and this particular tone. So, it's an interesting mix between the guitar and the tone that we're hearing, but, I mean, more often than not, you'd be looking to get at least a humbucker on your guitar, maybe a couple of those as your pickups in order to increase that sustain, get a little bit more aggressiveness in the sound. But here with the telly, he's got loads of aggression in the sound and the playing. But we're just gonna listen to the solo again and we'll break down some concepts. So I'm not gonna be going through this note by note because I haven't listened to it in that kind of depth, but we'll have a listen and see what Prince does. So straight off the bat, we've got this. He's kind of just throwing in a lot of caution to the wind and not really worrying about how it's sounding apart from when he gets up to the. Kind of like that. And let me just. Yeah, so we've got this. But also. That kind of thing, where we've got this hammer-ons and pull-offs without picking. So I wasn't picking there. I've just taken about five seconds so you guys can have a look at the guitar when he's playing and when he's picking and when he's not picking. So it was just on that. Actually going up to the... He has a little bend in there that he picks, but then hammering on, and then hammering on and pulling off, and then going down to the G, and he's just catching it with his third finger in order to not have to pick it, but to get that note to ring out, and then he applies some really cool vibrato in there. So now we've got this. Kind of like that. Let me listen. Let 
Yeah, it's just the tone. I thought it was maybe catching a little bit of that high E string, but he's not. I think just the tone is really heavy here. And I might go down to that first finger again. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, and you can see he kind of puts his hand behind his back to show that he's not picking. Uh, a little bit of showmanship there, but great technique in order to get those hammer on spot on. Because if you miss the string, you're not going to hear the note. And a little slide down there. And a little bit of vibrato as well. Again, not picking. And then little run up. Take that back. And it's kind of like that. Maybe even tiny bit on that B string. That kind of vibe. And now we've gone all the way down to. Which is now sliding from three to five on that B string, hitting that open E string as well, being a little bit freer with the right hand, but getting down into your. By the way, we're in E minor here if you're wanting to play along or kind of jam along with your own solo. We'll just have a listen to that phrase so you can hear those slides. And we had this. Little tweak on that third fret, high E string with the first finger. Ah. Was that it? Did he go to the open string? I'm just going to take that back. Oh no. He just kept it with that, that first finger. That kind of thing. So, swing it down. Kind of like that. If you just throw it together, again, he's just throwing caution to the wind here. So, it's just playing a very fast run, but resolving to his E down there, just to make that run kind of have a full stop at the end of it. And again. So, n not really playing any notes here, any melody. Just throwing in a couple of root notes here with the E. Okay, cool. So, we've got this. Okay. Okay, so he's sliding up from the octaves. They're getting up to the 12th fret. Oh, was there a little... Little bend. Kind of like that. I'm going to take that back. Okay, so that's that. Technique here, 12th fret again, minor pentatonic shape one. And it sounds like he kind of pedals between 14th, 15th fret. And then 14th fret high E string. And you just want to do a bend up to that 15th fret. That kind of vibe. <laughs> That's a nice little harmonic there. 
and they're kind of sliding back down. And as I said, I'm not playing the notes exactly here, but when you're listening to a player that's in a particular groove and a feel, and they're playing within that, you can start to try and get into that same feel yourself with the playing. So this is what I love about expressive players. You can start to feel the way that they're playing rather than working out the notes. As long as you can get close to that kind of almost like reckless abandon of playing, then you'll start to get a similar kind of sound. And it might be the fact that you're playing a lot of the same notes, but it's not through sitting down and working them out. You just hear it, but feel what the notes <laughs> feel like. I mean, it sounds stupid, but I think when you've been playing probably any instrument for a very long time, you start to be able to tap into the feeling of the notes rather than which notes you're trying to play. And certain notes feel a certain way, and especially when you're going into that... As soon as you hear that bend, as I said, that root note bend from the 15th fret, especially in E minor, 15th fret, bending up to your E, you just know that bend is there, and you just feel that bend straight away, and you know it instantly, but let's get back into it. Okay, now into a little bit of major pentatonic shape here. And as you can see, it's actually a, a good shot that I've stopped it on because we can see we're now in our major pentatonic shape one, the extended shape. So, and he's literally playing through every note. But then he has that little tweak. I'm just gonna take it back to see if he does a little pinched harmonic on, on that third finger or first finger. Oh no, he goes down. Kind of like that. So he does a little run down there. There might be more notes in that run down that I did, but he's just running down to, again, that open string. And now, again, the same. Sure, if there's that harmonic in there. Yeah. Just straight without a harmonic on that fifth fret, first finger. And. Oh. Did you resolve it? Yeah. So that was... A little rundown. Really cool playing here, loads of technique. And it's having the technique within the constraints of, or should I say, it's kind of being reckless with your playing, but with the constraints of technique. So that it's not so wild that you lose the notes that are being played, because it's just like lots of strings ringing out. That's the other thing to point out, the way that Prince is keeping all the other strings quiet. So you just hear the notes popping out rather than all of the other ones. And it's having great technique and control of technique so that you can be wild, but you can be wild and still clearly make all of the notes that you're playing stand out. And all the notes that Prince wants to stand out do because of the technique that he's applying. Let's get back into it. Okay, now into major fill shape here. I mean, pentatonic shape one. So, because we're effectively now playing our major shape here in E, we've got. And he's just doing a pull off on that D string and just repeating that phrase. Okay, and we've got this. Oh. It looked like he's barring that high E string, but he doesn't go as far as that with his pick. He's just hitting those two strings together, the G and the B, and just doing that unison bend. And again. 
same kind of thing here now, borrowing third finger, first finger. Okay. And this little slide down on that A string. Ah. And that was just a pure run up from the minor pentatonic notes here. Just a straight run up to first finger, 12th fret on the G. This is really cool, this part. Because um, he's got this. So to begin with, he's maintaining this bend on pitch and applying vibrato at the top of the bend. So we've got this. That's. It's dead on pitch where he wants to be. Then he's applying the vibrato on pitch. And now he lets the note descend. But now he's applying the vibrato just underneath the bend. And the reason that this is interesting but also cool is the face that he makes while he's doing it because it's not that he's done the bend and now he's lost where that bend is. He's intentionally making it go slightly lower than it needs to be so you get that kind of awkward feeling that going from <laughs> it just unsettles you and just look at his face because you know this is all intentional. And if that isn't a face of, I'm slightly underneath the bend, then I don't know what is, but that's the point, that he's doing this on purpose. Okay, now we've, we're going. So now barring, 14th fret, 12th fret. And occasionally throwing in maybe that 14th fret on the D. And now we've got this. He actually slides up. And kind of like that. Cool bend there. And he he does that. A little bend to that major the major chord if you know bar chords you'll know that your major note for your chord is here where that second finger is if you take that off it becomes a minor so he's just tweaking it towards that classic blues there just throwing that in but having that in there is rather than hammering on he has a little bend to it right at the end of that phrase oh again little slide down there um, down to the extended minor pentatonic shape in E minor. This is all in E minor. Aha, so there we had it. That was the signal. I said about this being pre-planned. I'm going to take that back because watch Prince because he makes a definite signal to the drummer as well, the whole band to say this is where I'm going to do the little bit that we rehearsed about the run up. There it is, really clear signal. And there we had it. So it was that. And actually we've got this. And he's kind of quite free with that right hand. And then the bend at the end. Um, might be a little run at the end of that. I'm going to take that back. Yeah, it is that kind of. Same kind of 
Honda thing second time. High E string there, just adding it in. Yeah, same. Bring all the way down. Again, same. Run down there. Interestingly, when he was playing that bed, he plays the same way, I mean, Prince was a small guy, so he probably had small hands, as I have small hands. And you can see the way that he comes over sometimes with that second finger and plays, rather than his third finger, plays a second finger. You'll find that, depending on the hand size of the player, they make different choices depending on which finger they use for bends and to fret positions that are one fret, two frets, or three frets higher up, or even more than that. And you can see that in this, the Prince is using that second finger. Just what you'll find and what I found when I was learning to play is that by using your second finger, if you can stretch, it means that it leaves your other fingers more space to get another note in there rather than using up that finger too early on and now you haven't got the stretch. So that if I was going like that, I can reach up. Whereas if I play with the third finger, I would have to tap it in. Let's get back into it. I think we're at the end here. Yeah, that's it. So it's out. Just a little run up again, major part of that extended pentatonic shape. But that's the point. It's just because he's playing wildly, but with great technique. Let me not underestimate the importance of ability, technique, control in order to play like this. You've got all the control in the world, but it's because of that that you can then let go and push your playing to the edge without falling over the edge. I always mention about the edge of the cliff. The greatest players seem to push their playing to the edge of that cliff, but they never fall over the edge where they just lose it and they suddenly start sounding rubbish. They just nail it in terms of that feel of emotion of being wild with it. And that's definitely the case here with Prince. But thank you guys for sending me a link to this video. It's actually over on Facebook, I believe, and not here on YouTube. But keep those suggestions coming here on YouTube in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!